Hello everyone, uh, my name is Frank Spangler and I'll be your instructor for these tutorials on EDIUS 7. Glad you're taking a look at EDIUS. Uh, it is a wonderful program. I've been using it now for oh, at least seven or eight years and uh, have followed along through the years as they have developed their program. And even though I have gone out and uh, tried a number of other options, I always seem to come back to EDIUS. And in this tutorial series, we're going to show you step by step how you can edit with the program. Even if you have never tried to edit videos before, EDIUS is a easy program to learn and we're going to show you how to do it. Now, if you have checked out our YouTube channel in the past or have uh, visited our uh, website ediustips.com, you'll know that uh, this isn't our first stab at making these tutorials. We have actually, uh, I think we started back when the program was um, maybe version 3, uh, we started uploading some tutorials on how to work with EDIUS. Currently at EDIUS Tips, we have tutorials on EDIUS 5, EDIUS version 6, and also some extra tutorials on 6.5. And even though the interface has not changed a lot since version 6, we thought this might be a good opportunity with the release of version 7 to create a new series of tutorials at a much higher quality using better tools that are available today in recording these tutorials. Uh, we'll have better audio and uh, we'll be recording and editing these videos in high definition so that you will have the option to watch these full screen uh, in high definition. Okay, a little bit now about the tools that we'll be using as we record these tutorials. We're going to be recording them actually on a laptop computer. Uh, we're running, let's check out the system specs here, we are running Windows 7 Home Premium, a 64-bit version of it, with Service Pack 1, and I believe that this is a minimum requirement to uh, being able to actually run EDIUS version 7. Uh, it only has 8 gigs of memory and a i7 processor uh, running at uh, 2630, which is a fairly decent speed for a laptop, uh, but uh, it is about three or four years old now, and uh, so if you have purchased a, a fairly decent quality uh, new laptop computer, you will probably have uh, uh, even a little bit better specs than what I have as we record these tutorials. The computer does have a fairly decent graphics card in it and that will help. One thing to keep in mind as you're judging how much real time I'm getting as I record these tutorials is that we are actually running a tutorial recording software program in the background that is taking up a lot of resources as we record these tutorials. So if you see me struggling a little bit to be able to play several layers of video with video effects and that type of thing all in real time, please don't judge it, don't judge the, the program that harshly because you saw we were only working with 8 gigs of memory and this Camtasia Studio that we're using to record the uh, tutorials is taking up about half of those resources and so that might slow things down a little bit. But otherwise, we wanted to use this laptop computer for several reasons. One is that it's actually easier to use Camtasia Studio to record these tutorials if you're only recording one screen. But the other reason we wanted to use uh, just a, a one screen setup is to be able to show you how it is actually possible to edit videos even with an older laptop working with limited resources and be able to easily make your home videos or even professional videos on the road using only minimal equipment. Now what I have done for this tutorial series is I have actually just downloaded a trial version of EDIUS 7 from the Grass Valley website, just as many of you might have as you're checking out the program. And so everything that I do is going to be working with the same environment that you have if you've just downloaded the trial version EDIUS 7. Okay, and so what we're going to do is launch the program for the very first time just as you are and uh, take you step by step through the process of getting started with the program. Uh, here it's asking for a serial number. You can just hit the start trial version. It lets you know how many days you have left. Now how long uh, the program takes to load up depends on a, a lot of different things. The first time it loads up it might take a little bit longer. Uh, if you have virus protection software running in the background that can really slow things down. 
Now, the first time that you run the program, you will be confronted with this little dialog box that asks you to select the default folder for the project files. So let's go ahead and hit Browse. And you'll be taken to a directory of your computer. Let's open up the computer. You'll see that I have a couple of hard drives attached to my laptop at the moment, uh, portable hard drives. And what we want to do is select one of these hard drives to become the place where our EDIUS projects are stored. Now, a couple things to keep in mind when you are selecting a hard drive where you're going to keep your EDIUS projects. Number one is that it should be something other than your system drive, the C drive. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want to choose a fast drive. In an ideal world, uh, you are working on a desktop computer and you have a nice fast RAID array system to be able to uh, do your project on. But short of that, uh, an internal hard drive that has a very fast connection to your motherboard would be a, a next ideal step. If you are using a portable drive that you're connecting to your desktop or laptop, try and uh, use a USB 3 portable drive. They, those are much faster than the older USB 2. However, um, just because you have a USB 3 drive does not in and of itself make it a, a fast connection to your computer. You have to be able to plug that into a USB 3 port. And whatever computer you're working on, if it's a relatively new computer, it is likely to have some ports that are USB 2 and some that are USB 3. So you want to make sure that you're plugging those USB 3 drives into a USB 3 port. I have two uh, USB 3 uh, ports on my laptop, and so both of these drives are USB 3. The next thing that we would want to uh, consider is how much space is left on these drives. Let's take a look at Windows here. We see that, uh, well, both of them are about the same. They have just over 600 and some gigs free, and so space-wise, it probably wouldn't matter which one we chose. Uh, the next thing that you would want to consider is that you want to choose a hard drive that can actually become the project drive for the project that you're working on. Ideally, what you want to do is be able to collect all of the media that you want to use in your project to one hard drive. Four years down the road, when your client calls you up and says, uh, when it's time to update our video. We want to make a, a, a few changes to the video and, and, and keep it current. Well, if you have all of your media for that project on one hard drive and it's in storage somewhere, all you'll have to do then is bring that one USB drive, hook it into your computer, play the project from the hard drive, and all of your media will be accessible. There won't be anything that's offline because we put some of it on the C drive or some of it on another portable drive somewhere. So good practice is to keep all of your media on one drive. And that's another reason why you want to select a hard drive that has a lot of space on it so that you can bring material in perhaps from previous shoots that you can use as stock media. Um, you know, bring in all of your music files, uh, keep everything on one hard drive so it's easy to update at a later time. Okay, in this case, I'm going to choose the uh, E drive, the Seagate. This particular hard drive just happens to have a lot of material already uh, saved to it that uh, we are going to use as our project sample in this tutorial series, and so it's a good choice. What we're going to do at this point is make a new folder and we'll call it EDIUS Projects. Hit OK. All right, in our next window, we see that we have uh, automatically created a profile uh, with, with a name. And you might be wondering, well, where, where did this name come from? Well, it uh, picks up the uh, name that you use when you log into Windows. So if you have multiple users on your laptop or whatever computer you're working on, whatever you logged into when you signed on to Windows is uh, where this name has been picked up from. And you might be wondering what a profile is. Well, if you have several editors working on the same computer, this allows you to set up a profile and be able to pick that profile when you start a new project. 
And then as you work with that project, you will be working with all of the customized settings that you have made as you have started using EDIUS. And so if you've made certain keyboard shortcuts and uh, created a look and feel that you are happy with, well, as you work with that profile, it, re it will remember all of those settings. You can save this on a USB device and take it to a new computer and uh, be able to quickly use the settings that you're comfortable with. All right, let's go ahead and create a new project. Now, the first time that you run EDIUS, you will be presented with this dialog box. You'll only see it the one time. This is where you can tell EDIUS a little bit about the types of projects that you typically work with. Uh, you know, are you usually working with high definition uh, or, you know, standard definition projects, regular DV, or are you mostly working in 4K now? Uh, you can also choose uh, frame rates that you normally work with uh, and whether you work in 8-bit or 10-bit. And based on the selections that you choose here, EDIUS will come up automatically uh, with some user presets that are appropriate for the types of projects that you usually typically work in. Now, in my case, uh, I haven't taken the jump to 4K yet, so we'll leave that box unchecked. I shoot mostly and edit mostly in high definition, so we'll select that. Rarely do I work in SD or DV, so we'll leave those unchecked. However, if you are working in these environments, you should probably at this point check these boxes. Now, frame rate. If you're new to video, you might be scratching your head a little bit and wondering, well, what should I check here? What's a frame rate and, and, and uh, how can I tell what my video, what frame rates my videos have been shot at? Well, frame rate usually has a lot to do with the country in which you live. Uh, you're probably familiar with the two main TV standards that are in our world today. One is called PAL or P-A-L. The other is NTSC. And if you're in Canada, the U.S., Japan, uh, you are probably working in NTSC. Most of the other countries of the world are in PAL. If you know that you are working in NTSC or have shot on a camera using NTSC settings, you will probably want to check the 59.94i. You'll also want to probably check the 29.97p. And if you have a camera that is capable of shooting 59.94p or progressive, then also check that box. However, if you are in PAL land or PAL country, you, your camera is probably shooting at uh, 50i, i standing for interlaced, or it's shooting at 25p for progressive. Now your camera again might be very uh, modern and uh, a new, very new camera and is capable of shooting 50 progressive. And so if you know that your camera is capable of that and you have chosen those settings when you shoot your video, then also check that box. Now there's one more down here, it's called uh, 23.98p. This is a setting that uh, is uh, something that uh, a lot of film majors have been using when they shoot their video, usually uh, with one of these DSLR cameras today. Um, most DSLR cameras will give you the option, actually, of not only shooting at 23.98, which is uh, kind of the same frame rate that film cameras have been shooting at for many, many years. And so film students like to use uh, that frame rate to mat kind of match a film look or, or, or create videos that uh, will eventually be transferred to the film medium. And uh, so if you are a film major and you've shot all of your video at uh, 23p and you've never used any of these other settings, then that would be the only box that you would need to check. In my case, I am shooting primarily in NTSC, so I'm going to choose all of these NTSC settings. I actually have a little flip camera, or I shouldn't call it a flip camera, a, a, a camcorder, I guess, you know, one of these ones that you hold in the palm of your hand, a Panasonic, beautiful little camera that actually does shoot in 59.94p. So I'll choose that as one of my uh, options. 
Now, just because you don't choose the other boxes doesn't mean that when you start a new project, you are no longer able to select these options, and we'll show you how you can customize settings in our next tutorial. All right, and then we have also the option of 8-bit or 10-bit. Now, if you are just a hobbyist and uh, prosumer, uh, most of your cameras are still shooting in just the 8-bit and most of the productions that you create will only need to be done in 8-bit. And so we'll just choose that box for now. However, you should know that you're not limited just because you select that box only. At any time, you are able to change any project to a 10-bit project, and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so with these boxes selected, we'll hit the Next button, and Edius will go ahead and create a bunch of presets that you can easily select when you start a project and uh, that way you'll be able to start a project very quickly just by choosing the most appropriate preset for the footage that you have. Okay, we'll hit completed and now we're presented with a dialog box that you will usually see now from this point on whenever you start a project you'll be taken directly to a dialog box like this and then based on the camera footage that you're going to be using for any particular project you can choose one of these presets let's say that you know that most of the shots that you have taken have been with a camera setting of 30 progressive or 29.97 P for progressive well that would be the preset that you would choose and then you'd give it a name the project we're going to be working on is from Myanmar. So we'll call it that. Now, some of you might be saying, well, hold on. Uh, most of my shots were at uh, 29.97 or 30p. But I know that about 20% of them were shot uh, in an interlaced format or, or shot with my little palm quarter at 60p. What setting should I choose that will allow me to use those settings? Well, don't worry about it. A rule of thumb here is select a preset that you know that most of your raw footage has been shot at and use that as your project setting. And then Edius will convert the rest on the fly when you drop it on the timeline. And we'll talk more about that in another tutorial. So once you have a setting chosen that represents the majority of your footage, then just hit the OK button and uh, Edia starts. All right, I think that that wraps it up for our first tutorial. And in our next tutorial, we'll show you how you can fine tune some of these settings and do it in a way that Edius will remember. But for now, I believe that that uh, wraps it up for getting started with Edius 7.